This is the 11th tutorial in the Rookie series of Final Cut Pro Beginner's Lessons. This lesson will show you how to edit the audio. Use your My First Edit project to follow from here with the completed Lesson 8 project. Click the eye above to access Lesson 1 that's got the details on how to download the course material. In some respects, audio is more important than the video itself. Research shows that your audience is more likely to stop watching sooner when audio is hard to hear than if the video is not up to scratch. No matter what, the best results are achieved at the recording stage. As the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. If there are problems with the recorded audio, then it's very hard and sometimes impossible to fix what's already been captured. And this is certainly the case, as you would have noticed by now, with the yachting footage. It's mostly to do with wind noise. Don't believe anyone who says you can just fix it in post. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. In this tutorial, I'll use some of the audio from a couple of clips, but otherwise I'll need to add audio from other sources. So you can see more of the audio, increase the height of the audio part of the clip as you saw in lesson number 9. The volume of the audio can be changed in the timeline by dragging the thin white horizontal line. You'll find that this moves quite rapidly, so hold the command key to slow that reaction time. You won't use any audio from clip number 22, so drag that line all the way down. You may ask, since most of the audio is not being used, why did you even import it in the first place? Yes, that's true, the clips could have been added to the timeline with the audio extracted. When you add a clip to the timeline, there's a choice to remove the audio before you add it. In the middle menu bar, click the little downward arrow, select video only. Click on clip 51 in the browser and press E. The clip will be added at the end of the timeline and there's no audio attached. Press Command Z to undo that and return the selection in the middle menu bar to All. Because of wind noise, none of the audio in clips 5 to 49 will be used. And since you've adjusted the audio already in clip 22 to a zero level, you could apply that level to all of those clips. You've seen how to do that in Lesson 8, when you change the effect of a number of clips by pasting. Here you'll do a similar type of paste, but you need to be selective as what you paste, and you'll see in a minute. This time, copy clip 22 in the same way. Select all clips between clip 5 and 49, and use paste attributes from the edit menu, and that's shift plus command plus V. Now you'll have a choice of which attributes to paste. You don't want to paste crisp contrast again, so untick that, but leave the volume ticked. You also need to remove all of the audio from the first clip, and in this case it will be quicker to do that directly, though there is some audio in clips 17 and 21 that you will use. Double click just the lower audio portion of clip 17, and avoid clicking on the horizontal line. The audio portion separates from the video, but it's still actually in sync with the video. Click on the left edge of the audio section and you'll be able to drag to the left. Take that beyond the first clip and under the opener title. Just under the name 17, there's a little white dot. Click on that. The cursor changes to a double-sided arrow. Drag that to the right. And this is an audio fade-in effect you can also do that at the end of clips. Drag the right side of the audio portion about halfway under clip 21. And here you can drag that fade out button I mentioned to the left as well. There's some audio in clip 21 that you can use. But it's going to be better to use further down the timeline. So right click on clip 21 and select detach audio. Drag it under the clips to the right and lengthen the edges so that you've got some suitable announcements over the loudspeakers. Don't worry about the wind noise. I'll show you later how to try and reduce that. 
adjust the fades on both clips so that they overlap and fade into each other. Select clip 17, go to the inspector and select the speaker button. Hover to the right of the label Audio Analysis and click on Show. Tick Noise Removal. This is not a magic bullet, but it does help. There's many other audio tools in Final Cut, but those are beyond the scope of this rookie series of tutorials. Select the noise removal for the detached audio, clip 21. To adjust the audio at the end of the video, double click the audio portion of clip 119 and drag to the left under 49, fade in and set the volume at minus 12. Drag the right side under 120 and fade out. To change the fade out effect in 120, right click on the end fade out dot and select minus 3 dB. This will slow the fade out effect. You're now at the stage of checking and adjusting the audio levels. You should always have the audio meters showing on the right hand side of the effects browser. If they're not showing for you at the moment, click on the small audio meters in the middle menu bar and then they'll appear at the right hand side of the effects browser. I can't be more forceful with this, but you always need to have the larger audio meters showing. They can be narrowed to give you more space. The following are the audio conventions that you need to adhere to. Audio levels above zero in the meters will cause peaking, and that means that audio won't be heard, and worse, it can also cause popping sounds in your soundtrack. The red warning squares will appear for audio over zero, and they're red for a reason. You'll notice that they stay on after the peak has passed when you're playing back. Your optimum levels are for peaks to be around minus 12 and up to minus 6. You measure these peak levels by watching the white bars at the top of each green meter. You'll also notice that the white bars stay visible for a brief period after the playhead has passed. Be aware, meters only show you the level you need to adjust those levels in the timeline. Let me explain. When a camera records audio, that raw audio footage is displayed in Final Cut as 0.0, .0 and that's no matter how loud that audio was when it was recorded. So a whisper or a scream will both show at 0.0, .0 in the browser's original clip and in your timeline. Think of this as the input level, but be aware this 0.0, .0 input level is different from that zero mark, that's the output level, that you've just seen in the meters. I know it's confusing, but to be clear, when you adjust the input level in the clip, these numbers are not the same as the output numbers in the meters. The clip numbers are relational to the 0.0, .0 input level and not the output level shown in the meters. It's important that you understand this to be able to get good audio levels. And if you're still confused with this, the takeaway is at the end of the day, your levels in the meters should be, as I said before, between minus 12 and minus 6. So do anything to adjust them to that level. Another thing to be aware of is what you hear through your headphones or your computer speakers is controlled by the device you're listening to. So this is likely to be a different level than what your video will be exported at. So think of it this way. If you're listening to your video in the timeline and it's too low, and you turn up the computer speakers, that's not going to affect the audio levels when you export your video. Next, I'll show you how to adjust part of your audio in a clip and adjust that portion only. You do this with the R tool selection. Press the R key, and it's also in the tools, you'll see the cursor change. 
Place the play head at the beginning of the detached audio of clip 21. Press the space bar and play until you hear the wind noise start. Move your cursor back by pressing the left hand arrow a few times to position it just before the wind comes in. Click at the playhead and drag to the right to enclose all of the wind noise. You'll see a yellow range outline. Drag the horizontal line down to about minus 17. Press A to return to the selection tool and click in the black area. You'll now see four keyframe dots that can be adjusted to smooth the volume level change. To finish off this audio lesson, you'll add some of the audio you've downloaded. Click the playhead at the beginning of clip 5. In the browser sidebar, select audio only inside the smart collections. Select ocean. Press Q. Adjust the volume to minus 9 and fade at the beginning of that clip. And the absolute last thing to do is to add a small selection of the beach music under the opener title. You'll also find Beach in the Smart Collections in the browser audio only. To quickly get the playhead to the very beginning of the video, press the home key. You'll recall this from lesson number nine. Otherwise, manually position the playhead at the beginning and press Q. Adjust the fade in, fade out, and set the volume level to about minus seven. Well done in getting this far, audio is a tricky subject, and if you're still a bit unsure, there's no rules that say you can't do this lesson again. Just open up another copy of the project completed, lesson 8, and start again. The next lesson is colour correction, and I promise not to be so brutal with that. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one tuition with Final Cut Pro, just click on training finalcutpro.com and I'd be happy to set up a personalized training program. But if you're just looking for answers on a specific topic, I can offer free Final Cut Pro support via email for urgent issues as you're confronted with them. Let me know in the comments below if you've got areas that you struggle with in Final Cut and I'd be happy to produce a YouTube video to help you solve those issues. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and press the bell. There are new videos every Sunday.